In this video I'm going to introduce the Duville formalism. That's a quite interesting formalism and quite important because it actually gives you the possibility to derive for any system that respects the real law and therefore any system that can be expressed with the Hamiltonian equations. So as long as we do have a symplectic system, a canonical system, we have a canonical transformation, name it as you like, they more or less all mean the same thing. And actually, we, for each of these systems, you can create a time step algorithm that will be like the velocity verlet. Actually, if we use only one time step, it will be velocity verlet. They will all conserve a pseudo-Hamiltonian, all be reversible, so in general, and all be stable. So they will all be well behaved. But the interesting thing is that you can do it also for some complex systems where we will need a multi-time step algorithm. We'll talk a little bit more about multi-time step algorithms in another video, but it's still interesting. Let's start talking about this Liouville formalism, how it's made. Let's start with what is a propagator? A propagator is an operator, let's call it u of t, that has this very interesting feature. If you apply it to a function, whatever function, at time zero, it will give you the function at time t. So it propagates the function in time. That's a propagator. And we can write a propagator in a system that, as said, is Hamiltonian as the exponential of i, so the imaginary unit, an operator called Luvel operator, and t. This is a propagator for systems that do respect the Luvel law. Let's see a little bit better this part. How is this Luvel operator expressed? We won't discuss about uh, how you obtain it, that's more a statistical mechanics part. Um, we won't talk about this in this video. We won't derive it. We will simply use it. Now, you can say that the imaginary unit L is equal to the sum over all the degrees of freedom of the momenta and the derivative according to the momenta of whatever we are applying the operator to, plus the sum over, again, all the degrees of freedom of the positions, of the derivative of the position, and that's the derivative, the time derivative of the momentum, times the derivative according to the positions. But if you remember Hamilton's equations, so the canonical equations, we can also rewrite it like this. Let's put it all inside a bracket, it's easier. Minus the derivative of the Hamiltonian depending on the positions times the derivative according to the momenta plus the Hamiltonian, the derivative according to the momenta times the derivative according to the positions. Now I'm going to reverse them so we don't want to have this boring minus sign and you will notice something that if I put it like this in this way you should notice that that's incredibly similar to a Poisson bracket so we could therefore we could say that e at the i l t is nothing more than e at the Poisson bracket between the Hamiltonian and time. So if the Hamiltonian commutes with time in the Poisson bracket, actually we'll have a constant function. Or in general our system will be constant. And time in independent. So that's interesting to see because it's quite similar to what you see in quantum mechanics in, in the quantum mechanical Liouville theorem. But now go back because we are going to use this expression. So how can we express this now that we know the expression for the Liouville operator? It will be e, the sum over all the degrees of freedom of the derivative of pi, the 
the pi plus the time derivative of the position d in the positions. And that's again our propagator as said. And you will notice that this part will propagate the momenta, thus the velocities, and this part will propagate the positions. We can split our Louisville operator in two different parts, one of the momenta plus one of the positions. Thus we can write it as E at the L momenta plus L positions. Now it would be nice to split it as we would do usually with an exponential in two different exponentials. But the problem is that as these two operators do not commute, we cannot do it. So when we have not commuting operators, we cannot split it. So how could we do it to still have something like a splitting? In our help we have a theorem that says that e at the a plus b is equal in the limit for a value p that goes to infinity of e at b half p e at the a p e at the b to p all at the power of p. So if we define delta t as t divided p, we could rewrite it as e at l in the positions. I'm inverting it as before, and we'll see why. l in the momenta as the limit for p that goes to infinity of e at l p delta t half l q delta t e l p delta t half all at the power of p. You should already see that that's quite similar to velocity verlet you update the velocity for one half of time step, you update the position for the whole time step, you update the velocity for the half time step for a certain number of times. So that's, in fact, that's exactly the velocity relay, what we have obtained here. But, as you can see, the thing is that this is exactly true only for an unlimited amount of time steps with an unlimitedly small time step. So again, Newton's laws are reversible for inf in infinitesimally small time steps. But if we do these time steps small enough, and we do enough of them, we could say that we can remove the limit. So we can say that the old propagator that were of u of t plus delta t so our algorithm that brings us to the next time step is equal to a propagator of the momenta of time plus one half delta t, a propagator of the positions of time plus delta t, and a propagator of the momenta again of time plus one half delta t. T. So, again, this is exactly what we had for the velocity relay. And that's the reason why the velocity relay behaves so well. That's because we have derived it in this way. Uh, or actually, in the beginning it wasn't derived in this way. It was derived in a different way, but now we know why it has a physical sense. Because it comes from the level formalism. If we have, and we'll see it better in another video, different potential, part of the potential 
because we have to split the potential that have completely different time steps or better different frequencies or different time scales if you prefer then in that case you can split it up more and more having inner loops that will propagate exactly in that way the faster degrees of freedom like the vibrational and then slowly start propagating in time the slower ones like transi translations intermolecular interactions etc 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 and you can do it with any potential arbitrarily it can be as complex as you want you can divide it in any way you want you can still do overly like algorithm and actually as you have seen there is not a big difference between a plus b and b plus a in fact that's the reason why uh, I may have not talked about it. Velocity verle and position verle, that is the exact opposite in for which you uh, um, update position for one half time, velocity for the whole time, position for the other half time, are perfectly equivalent because they are the same thing. They are simply split in a different way. But I said that these algorithms work very well only as long as we have I said a Hamiltonian system or a symplectic system, tell it as you like. And thus, if the transformation we are doing to propagate our function in time is a canonical transformation, because remember that transforming a function or our system in time is a transformation. It can be or cannot be canonical depending on the system. Usually, if you put things like barostats and thermostats, you, it can stop being a canonical transformation. And it usually stops because you insert or remove energy in the system quite arbitrarily in order to keep the pressure or the temperature that you decided that you want to keep. So you, th you might think that it's not possible actually to do a splitting like this or in case of multiple time steps, um, complex splitting in the same way. But actually, actually, luckily enough, you can still do it. It will simply be uh, correct at the second order. Uh, I might confuse myself, but if I'm not wrong, as long as the Liouville law is conserved, it sh this should be uh, value should be correct at the fourth order, if I don't remember wrong. But I'm sure that if you are using it in a non-canonical system, it will be correct at the second order, but you can still do it. In general, you will find a very nice explanation about this part on the books that I have usually linked down, but actually also for free in the documentation of the ORAC Molecular Dynamics program that I will again put in the description. Uh, it's well written, so you can, you can check it out. Now in the next video I will a little bit better show you how you can use it when you have to divide the potential in more parts because you have different degrees of freedom, do have different frequencies. So we'll have very, very, very fast ones and very, very slow ones. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the sources and the materials I used to do it are written in the description below. And here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comments section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, links in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, consider to donate on Patreon. Again, link in the description below. See you next time. I'm Maurice Karnbrock for The Computational Chemist.